This is part of a series I call the Making Evidence-Based Medicine Simple Series, or MESS for short. In this MESS Mini, we'll be discussing the interpretation of odds ratios, relative risk, and hazard ratios. To understand the concept of odds, it is helpful to compare it to risk. A risk is the number of times an event occurred divided by the number of times it could have occurred. For example, the risk of drawing the ace of spades from a deck of cards is 1 of 52. And odds is the number of times an event occurred divided by the number of times it did not occur. The odds of drawing the ace of spades from a deck of cards is 1 of 51. Notice the difference in the denominator for risk and odds. For risk, it is the number of times an event could occur. For odds, it is the number of times an event did not occur. Risk and odds are very similar when the event is rare, such as drawing the ace of spades from a deck of cards. As we move down the table, the likelihood of the event increases. As the likelihood of an event increases, the difference between risk and odds also increases. In a clinical trial, relative risk is defined by convention as the risk of the outcome in the intervention group divided by the risk of the outcome in the control group. The syntax is the same for an odds ratio. An odds ratio is the odds of the outcome in the intervention group divided by the odds of the outcome in the control group. In cohort studies, relative risk is defined by convention as the risk of the outcome in the exposure group divided by the risk of the outcome in the no exposure group. The syntax is the same for an odds ratio. An odds ratio is the odds of the outcome in the exposure group divided by the odds of the outcome in the no exposure group. Odds ratios should be used for case control studies. In case control studies, the investigator determines the ratio of cases to control and risk should not be calculated. Odds ratios are also the product of logistic regression analysis. Relative risk is typically used in randomized clinical trials and cohort studies. I find that odds are difficult to wrap my head around, so I prefer relative risk whenever possible. This is a 2x2 two two table with the outcome represented in the columns and the study groups in the rows. For risk, the numerator labeled N1 and N2 is the yes outcome cell for the intervention and the yes outcome cell for the control, respectively. The denominator, labeled D1 and D2, is the marginal total for the intervention group and the control group, respectively. By convention, the relative risk is the risk in the intervention group divided by the risk in the control group. For odds, the numerator is the yes outcome cell labeled N1 and N2 for the intervention group and the control group, respectively. This is the same as risk. The denominator in an odds is the no outcome cell labeled D1 and D2 for the intervention group and the control group, respectively. This is different from a risk where the denominator is the marginal total in each group. By convention, an odds ratio is the odds of the intervention group divided by the odds in the control group. Authors don't always follow convention, and it is essential to determine what group is in the numerator and what group is in the denominator to interpret a relative risk or an odds ratio. If it is unclear if the risk in the intervention group is in the numerator or the denominator, it is helpful to examine the absolute risk in each group. If the absolute risk in the intervention group is greater than the absolute risk in the control group, and the relative risk is greater than one, then the intervention group is in the numerator and the control group is in the denominator. If the relative risk is less than one, then the control group is the numerator and the intervention group is in the denominator. In this example, the risk or odds of the intervention group 80% is larger than the risk in the control group. A relative risk or odds ratio of 4 indicates that the intervention is in the numerator and the control is in the denominator. A relative risk or odds ratio of 0 0.25 indicates that the control is in the numerator and the intervention is in the denominator. Let's look at a 2x2 two two table for a typical randomized clinical trial. The risk of the outcome in the intervention group is 50 divided by 200 which equals 0.25 or 25%. The risk of the outcome in the control group is 100 divided by 200, which equals 0.5 or 50%. The relative risk becomes 0.25 divided by 0.5 or 0.5. Now let's look at the odds ratios using the same data. 
The odds of the outcome in the intervention group is 50 divided by 150, which equals 0.33 or 33%. The odds of the outcome in the control group is 100 divided by 100, which equals 1 or 100%. The odds ratio becomes 0.33 divided by 1 or 0.33. How do we interpret relative risk and odds ratios? A relative risk greater than 1 indicates that the risk in the intervention group is greater than the risk in the control group. A relative risk equal to 1 indicates that the risk in the intervention group is the same as the risk in the control group. In other words, there is no difference between the groups. This is an important concept. A confidence interval for a relative risk that includes 1 indicates that there is not a statistically significant difference between the intervention and the control groups. Finally, a relative risk less than 1 indicates that the risk in the intervention group is lower than the risk in the control group. Odds ratios are interpreted in the same manner. Let's try to express the relative risk in a sentence using the study parameters from a study of otitis media treatment failure comparing a long to a short course of antibiotics. The relative risk of treatment failure with a short course of antibiotics in the numerator and a long course of antibiotics in the denominator was 1.22. We will use the following template. A patient in the intervention group was relative risk times more likely to have an outcome than a patient in the control group. If the relative risk was less than 1, then we would have said relative risk times less likely. For the otitis media study, this is, in a patient in the short course antibiotic group, the risk of treatment failure was 1.22 times higher than a patient in the long course antibiotic group. The confidence interval for the relative risk includes 1 indicating that there was not a statistically significant difference. We would do the same thing for an odds ratio by substituting the words odds for risk. The odds of a treatment failure with a short course of antibiotics in the numerator and a long course of antibiotics in the denominator was 1.22. A patient in the intervention group was odds ratios times more likely to have an outcome than a patient in the control group. If the odds ratio was less than 1, then we would have said odds ratio times less likely. For the otitis media meta-analysis, this is, for a patient in the short course antibiotics group, the odds of treatment failure was 1.22 times higher than a patient in the long course antibiotic group. The confidence interval for the odds ratio includes one, indicating that there is no statistically significant difference. Why do I need both an absolute and relative measure of the treatment effect? In this example, we will compare the results of two studies. In study 1, the absolute risk of the outcome with drug A was 50%, and the absolute risk of the outcome with drug B was 25%. The absolute risk difference is drug A minus drug B, or 50% minus 25%, which equals 25%. The relative risk of drug A divided by drug B is 50% divided by 25%, which equals 2. In study 2, the absolute risk of the outcome with drug A was 5%, and the absolute risk of the outcome with drug B was 2.5%. The absolute risk difference is drug A minus drug B, or 5% minus 2.5%, which equals 2.5%. The relative risk of drug A divided by drug B is 5% divided by 2.5%, which equals 2. We can see that the relative risks are both the same, relative risks of 2. Yet the absolute risk difference are very different, 25% versus 2.5%. If you only had the relative risk, you would conclude that the two studies had similar results. Always determine the absolute risk difference as well as the relative risk. The term hazard comes from the statistical technique used in time-to-event analyses called the Cox Proportional Hazard Regression Analysis, or regression model. A hazard is the risk of an event at any point in time over the study period. A hazard rate is the risk of an event at any point in time in a specific group over the study period. A hazard ratio is the hazard rate in one group divided by the hazard rate in another group at any point in time over the study period. I am using the phrase any point in time over the study period to indicate the outcome over the study duration and not at a specific point in time. Hazard ratios are used in the time to event analyses. The Kaplan-Meier curve is the most common form of a time-to-event analysis. The hazard ratio expresses the difference between the two curves at any point in time over the study time interval. A hazard ratio is a quantitative measure of the difference between the two curves.
like an odds ratio and relative risk, a hazard ratio is typically paired with a 95% confidence interval. Captain Meyer curves are reviewed in a separate MESS Mini. In this example, we could calculate a relative risk or an odds ratio at the end of the study, that is, at a specific point in time. In contrast, a hazard ratio assesses the probability of an event at any point in time over the study period. Hazard ratios are interpreted in the same manner as relative risk and odds ratios, with the difference that they are applied to any point in time over the study period. In summary, odds are a tricky concept to understand. I strongly prefer using the absolute risk in each group to calculate a relative risk. However, odds ratios are unavoidable in logistic regression in case control studies. When interpreting a relative risk, odds ratio, or hazard ratio, it is important to understand which of the study groups is in the numerator and which is in the denominator. In addition, it is essential to interpret relative risk, odds ratio, and hazard ratio in the context of the difference in absolute risks, odds, or hazard rates. Hazard ratios are used in time to event analyses and interpreted similarly to relative risk and odds ratio. However, hazard ratios apply to event rates over the study period, while relative risk and odds ratio refer to the event rates at a specific point in time, usually at the end of the study period.